Joining me now in studio is Greg Palast. He's a, a investigative reporter, uh, in fact, award winning. In fact, you just won an award <laughs> uh, for investigative journalist, international uh, journalist of the year in uh, in Mexico. Yes. Uh, the Association of Mexican Journalists gave that to you. Yes, throughout Latin America. So I was the international journalist of the year, um, cementing my post as prophet outcast in his own land. A lot of it for my investigations actually in the fixing of the elections in Georgia, how Stacey Abrams uh, lost. That was big news actually throughout Latin America. You know, mm -hmm. uh, about a billion people of color uh, concerned about what's happening here in the US with apartheid elections. And also, because back in 2006, the current president of Mexico had won his election. I investigated that too. So, you know, I've been doing investigations of fixed elections all over the planet. But yeah. So, Greg, here too. Um, Latin Americans, would they know anything about Americans fixing elections? <laughs> <laughs> well, because they used our same, they used the same consultants to do the fixing. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, that's 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 the trick. So you know, I mean, you see some of the same cats like Carl Rove, etc., down down there uh, working their systems. But I'm really worried because I broke a story back in 2016 for Rolling Stone, and then on here in Young Turks that there was a system called Crosscheck created by a guy named Chris Kobach of Kansas or KKK as we call him. And uh, no one knew who he was then. You kind of introduced him. Uh, you know, he's the vote thief in chief for Donald Trump. And he had a system called interstate cross check in which he started removing people who are voting twice. You know, all these evil, fraudulent voters uh, like uh, David, uh, like, well, for example, James Brown, 535 guys named James Brown in Georgia voting in other states because they found, you know, James Brown in. In Detroit, and they found James Brown in Arizona. Even though one was James Thomas Brown, the other was James Edward Brown. Said same guy voting twice, remove him. And the trick was, eighty-five of the, of the hundred most common last names in America are minority names: Rodriguez, uh, uh, you know, Nguyen, Black, Johnson, etc. So it's a wonderful way. And they knocked off 1.1 million minority voters in 2016. That could have been the number that uh, that put Trump over the top, not the voters, but the trick by Kobach. The good news is that we've just about killed off that program with exposure. The bad news is that they've got a new one, and, this, so, and that's what I'm concerned with, new, new programs. So I'm very concerned about 2020, we're gonna get to that yeah. in a second. But you know, I just had an epiphany. So we talked about cross check, I've talked about it on the show a number of times. And I know that trick, and I know that Asians have, the, I think, the most common last names, yes. and then Latinos, and then African Americans. And for and and I used to say, for whatever reason, white folks have a variety of last names, so it doesn't affect them as much. When Republicans notice that, they're like, "Perfect, we'll say they have the same name, right. it's the same guy, we'll cross them off, and it'll hit minorities harder, which vote more Democratic." But one thing I had not realized until you were just talking about it, Greg, is the reason African Americans have similar last names is because of the plantations. Slavery. And and, and they would take on the, the last names of the slave owners. And and all of them would have the same last name from the same plantation. Right. So, so it is slavery raining down on us for another round of discrimination. That's of right. Slavery doesn't leave us. It come it works right into massive voter purging. And you know, so it, you know, the idea that slavery is something that used to be, no, it's still echoing, and they understand it and they use it because they understand these demographic uh, issues. And even in the new gimmick, like the new one I've I've just uncovered. Okay, in Georgia, I've just filed a lawsuit, a federal lawsuit against a Brian Kemp, who is now Governor Kemp. He was Secretary of State Kemp in charge of the election in which he ran for governor. He wiped out. Just before the election, over half a million voters. I sued him in federal court and got the list of all the the voters in Georgia that were purged, and mostly for having left the state or moved. I then got the nation's top experts from Silicon Valley, took the computer tapes, had them go name by name, and they said, with absolute 100 percent certainty, 340,134 people. Overwhelmingly minorities, third of a million people never left their registration homes, but they lost their right to vote. And you might say, well, how did they pick out minorities? Well, again, they understand the demographics. 
And they're really good at this stuff, really good, okay? So what they did was they said if people missed two federal elections, okay, you, you blew off the 2016 election, or like me, I got assigned out of state and I lost my vote, I didn't have a chance to, to vote. Um, and if you miss the mid uh, a midterm, like in 14, because there was, uh, especially in black areas, there were uh, uncontested congressional elections, people didn't bother to vote. Miss two, you get a postcard. You don't return the postcard, you lose your vote. Now you say, well, okay, so return the postcard. The answer is it looks like junk mail. And minorities and low income people and students, another blue demographic, move. Um, so what the census found, they, they measured this. They said, you're about 600% more likely to return a postcard from the government if you're white, suburban, and a homeowner and elderly, then if you're black, urban, and young. Um, you're, you know, th they understand the demographics, and it's not small. I, one third of a million people. And by the way, in the third of a million people was included Christine Ford, I because I had the list. I went to the polls, um, and Christine Ford was there. She tried to vote. She's 92 years old, well, now she's 93. Martin Luther King's cousin. I think we have a tape of that. Do you have the tape of yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, oh can we God. roll that, guys? Has this ever happened to you before? Never. How long you been voting? Oh, my life, ever since I was old enough. But I've been voting right here, ever since 1968. Yeah. And it's just, it's horrible. And, and I say that because the West End, she's been in this community back when we could. When they were doing sit-ins, she held civil rights meetings in her home. And today to come out and not be able to vote and no one can give you an explanation, like it's extremely emotional and it bothers me. It bothers me to my core. Like there's actually no record of her whatsoever voting in any election whatsoever and it's ridiculous. I'm sorry. So Greg, she's uh, Martin Luther King's cousin? Yeah, we didn't know that when I took the film. Uh -huh. Her your niece was ab absolutely distraught. She's talking about civil rights meetings at home because it was Mar where Martin Luther King went after his sermons on Sunday. And they would have the the uh, the meetings for the civil rights movement in her home. Makes sense, she's and from Atlanta. for 50 years, but what happened, she got a postcard. Okay, and by the way, she never missed voting. But understand, they have all kinds of ways to send you postcards. We call it purge by postcard. She's 92. Her niece has to come over and read the mail. There's tons of it. It looks like junk mail gets thrown out. That's what happens. And so what happens? They understand the demographic that they're hitting, and and they also know how to get to the white voters and say, look out for this stuff. You've got to return this postcard. You know, so you'd say, well, okay, it's just a postcard, but it isn't. The, the, just so you know, the National Voter Registration Act says in like hard black type, you may not remove anyone from the voter rolls for not voting. In America, you have the right to vote, right not to vote. Right. So what are they doing? They're saying, oh, we're not saying that these people are being removed because they missed a couple votes, because that's absolutely against federal law. What they're saying is, they didn't vote and they didn't return a postcard. Oh, they must have moved away. Yeah. Now, it's insane, but it's it affects about not just Georgia, about 30 states. GOP states are using this to just whoosh, erase voter rolls. So, Greg, uh, let's dive in the numbers real quick. Mm -hmm. um, so, 340,000 people wiped off the rolls in Georgia illegally. And how much did Kemp beat Stacey Abrams by theoretically? Uh, 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 Officially, 54,000 votes. So if those 340,000 got to vote, there's an excellent chance she would have won. Well, according to Stacey Abrams, she quotes that 340,000 number from me and she said, because of that, there is no question that I won, but I was not inaugurated. And I bless her for saying it. So is there any shot at justice or no, we cheated, we won, who cares, it's over? Uh, both, there's a shot at justice. But we've already been shot by injustice. Stacey Abrams started it by being one of the first Democratic candidates ever to say, I lost an election because of racial vote manipulation. Others say, oh, I don't want to attack the, the Democratic process like Al Gore. You know, I did the, the story back in 2000 where uh, Catherine Harris, a Republican Secretary of State, removed tens of thousands of black folk from the voter rolls, saying that they were felons who couldn't vote. 
about 58,000 were removed, almost all black, no guessing because it says BLA next to their names in Georgia rolls. And um, not one, not a single one was an ex-con, not one. That's what elected George Bush. This has been happening every time, every four years as a new gimmick. So it's like whack-a-mole, expose one, they, they come up with another. So we expose cross-check, we expose the fake felon purge. Now they have this purge by postcard saying, you don't live there anymore. Chris Kobach spreading this over 30 states. The GOP is gonna use this. Cross-check wiped out 1.1 million voters in, uh, in 2016, wrongly. They couldn't identify any double voters from that list, not one. They removed a million people. And I think that this is gonna remove double that. Okay, so Greg, we're running out of time, and so I want to ask you about one more set of numbers. Mm -hmm. Trump won uh, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin by seventy-eight thousand votes. Right, that's just thirty-nine thousand people if they flip. Right, but mm -hmm. look, forget the flipping. Let's just call it seventy-eight thousand. How many uh, people do you think were wiped off the voter rolls in twenty sixteen across the country? Uh, we know fourteen million, according to the Brennan Center. That's accurate. About at least three million illegally, wrongly removed. I can tell you in Michigan, I spoke to Secretary of State, I went there right after the election, at least 60,000 people wrongly removed by cross check, no one double voted, they didn't arrest anyone. That was a complete steal, Wisconsin. There were a non count of votes. By the way, the so called recount was stopped in a federal court by Trump's lawyers. So. It was seven, there were about um, 100,000 ballots which were simply rejected and never counted in Madison and Milwaukee Democratic counties. Pennsylvania, very similar story, a non count of votes which could not be recounted because of the machines they use. Ohio, Arizona, Iowa, other suspect states. Yeah, I mean, get a load of this uh, final irony. Um, and I, this just occurred to me as you stated the numbers. Uh, Three million people illegally taken off the voter rolls that helped Trump win. The number he always uses as the number of people who voted fake votes <laughs> is three million. Now, remember, there were no three million fake voters. He cr tried Chris Kobach's. Uh, well, they're looking for the alien voters, and I said, "Show me them. Where is Jose coming out of the uh, out of the Rio Grande to vote for Hillary Clinton? Where is that voter?" Yeah. None, they never had any evidence, they had to shut down the commission, deeply embarrassed. Chris Kobach was the head of that commission and they tucked tail and ran because they were lying all the way. It turns out the real three million was actually in their favor because they got rid of That's those right. voters. And that is exactly what the Republican and Party and Trump does every time. It's projection, whatever they're guilty of, they claim the Democrats did or the other side did. It's not estimating, we have the names and addresses of the people wrongly removed. So everybody check out gregpalace.com, you're gonna yeah. find out a lot more there, gregpalace.com. Okay, Greg, thank you so much for joining us, really appreciate it. We got okay. a lot of work to do. Exactly right, because the next election is coming up, we gotta get vigilant right now.